Open your Bible with me now in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. We are going to read from verse 21. Give the word of God your undivided attention during the message. If you don't have to scratch your itch, please don't. So you don't... <laughs> You don't get distracted. Amen. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because everything you want is in the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the enemy, he does everything to distract you from receiving the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. Chapter 21 says, Now when Jesus... Are we there? Now when Jesus had crossed over again... By boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, uh, one of the rulers of the synagogue came to came Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at home at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her. That she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. When she learned about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And she, Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw, eh? And those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridicule him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father, the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took her by the hand and said, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it. And said that something should be given her to eat. If you still up, say amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says that the word of God, the word of God carries the power to transform to change to save to heal to deliver the bible says the people cried out god heard the cry he sent his word and what he did he healed them the blessing came through the word come on the blessing came through the word 
the same way that blessing is going to come to you this morning through the word as you receive the word of God. You know, the story that we just finished reading is very familiar to many of us. We've heard the uh, Jairus going to Jesus um, time and time again. We've heard the woman with the issue of blood touching the garment of Jesus time and time again. You know, it's a very familiar story to many of us. But this morning, I want to share with you something very important in the message, in the story that perhaps many of us have missed time and again as we read the story of Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue. There are some very important things in the story that I want us to look at today. A few points that I believe will bless you greatly in the name of the Lord. First of all, uh, all of us in this church, much like Jairus, there are things that we want to be done for us that we cannot do for ourselves. How many of you in here have things that you want to be done for you that you cannot do for yourself? Be honest. Come on. Don't lie in church. All of us. All of us. One of those things is salvation of our soul. We all want to be saved, but we cannot what? save ourselves. And there are many places that maybe you want to go in life that you cannot make it happen. There are many things that you want to accomplish in life that you cannot make it happen on your own. So we have this in common with Jairus. Jairus wanted something, but he could not do it for himself. And uh, in order for Jairus to get what he wanted in life, there were some steps that he had to take, much like us. In order for us to do certain things in life, there are some steps that we need to take. First step that Jairus had to take was a step of humility. First step he had to take was a step of humility. He had to humble himself to admit that he needed something. And that he could not make it happen for himself. You know, uh, not too long ago we talked about pride. And I said that pride makes us blind and deaf to the truth that can set us free. And, 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 and the Bible says, in the, if you take taking notes, you may write it down. In James uh, uh, chapter 4 verse 10, if I'm not wrong, the Bible says there that, Bible says that, if we humble ourselves under the mighty hands of God, that God will lift us up. We do the humbling, God will do the lifting. Amen? We go low and God lifts us what? Higher. If we humble ourselves under the mighty hands of God, he will lift us up in due time. Humility is the key ingredient in the recipe of success. Especially for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. When you read, if you're taking notes, you may want to write it down too and read it later. When you go home, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 on, you will see the Bible encouraging us to have the mind of Christ, which is a humble mind. And it helps us dear, to understand that Christ could only accomplish and finish his assignment here on earth because he walked the path of humility. The Bible says that he was humble to the point of death and death of the cross, which was the worst death that anyone could die back then, especially when you're not guilty of any crime. But Jesus humbled himself to that level. Jesus left his glory above and he humbled himself. He came down to the earth 
to be found in the appearance of sinners. And the Bible says that he lived among us, looking like us when he didn't have to. But all that he did through humility, because that was the only way that he could lift us up to his level. You see, when you are humble, you're not selfish. And you are not self-centered. So Jairus had to take that step of humility. Bible made it clear to us that he had a position, right? Bible said that he was what? One of the what? The rulers of the synagogue. When you study the scripture, if he was a ruler, if one of the rulers of the synagogue, that means that he could be part of the, 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 the group of the Pharisees that opposed Jesus greatly. But Jairus was humble enough to lay aside his position, to lay aside his title, to let go of the title, the position, the name that he had in his community to go to Jesus and fall down before Jesus on his knees and say, Lord, there is something that I want. Nobody can give it to me, but I believe that you can do it. You see, there are many people that because of their position, you see, certain position breeds pride. You understand? Certain positions become a breeding ground for pride. And as a result of pride, they are not able to walk in the fullness of what God has prepared for them. Because there's certain things that will never happen for you and I unless we are willing to walk the path of humility. We have to lay aside whatever it is that's sustaining that spirit of pride in us and say, no, I'm going to start walking now the path of humility because I want to, you know, I, uh, talking about pride. I remember there was a time that I was pastor in a, a small church, a very humble church, and uh, um, <clears throat> there was this lady that was member of, of the congregation and she worked for this wealthy family very wealthy family and um, the wife of the husband was sick and they had done everything they had done everything that they could possibly do to try to find cure for her situation but Nothing could help. They were wealthy, but you know, there's certain things that money cannot buy. There's certain things that your position cannot buy. There's certain things that your connections cannot get for you. There's certain things that your, your degree will not do for you. And you know, the Bible says, Bible do talk about those who have forsaken the Lord, the spring of living water, and they have dug for themselves broken cistern that cannot hold water. He says, you, 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 you forsaking me, a fountain of living water, and you busy digging little holes for yourself that cannot hold water. And often we do that because of what? Pride. So this, the, 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 this woman she had come to church, she had been blessed, and when she saw the wife of her boss in that condition, she talked to her, she said, well, you know what, why don't you come to my church and let the pastor pray for you because I've heard a lot of testimony, a lot of good things happening. And um, the husband said to the wife, if you want to go, you can go, but uh, where is the church at? When they, they told him, ah, no, 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 I ain't going, no, no, no. if you want to go, you go. So the lady, of course, she had no other choice. She wanted to be healed. She came. And when she came, miraculously, she got healed. God 
God healed her. God delivered her. God set her free. And one day, the husband sent me a note. He said, well, I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful for what you all have done for my wife. And I would really love to be part of you, but my position. I hope you will understand me, but my position don't permit me to associate with, be, with certain people. You know, some people, they're bold enough to tell you what they think. You know, there's certain things that you think you don't say. <laughs> but some people are what? Bold enough. I mean, he put it in writing. And you would think that somebody after you seen the power of God in such a way, you're about to lose your wife. And God heal and deliver. You should be grateful and humble yourself and say, you know what? He is who he says he is. No, he said, nah, but you know, because of my position, you know, don't permit me. The problem is not the position. The problem is not the position. The problem is the spirit that possess the individual. Because it doesn't matter how powerful you are. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. You're not as intelligent, as wealthy, as powerful as Jesus himself. But when the occasion demand him to humble himself, Bible says that he had humbled himself. He left his glory. He removed the garment of his glory. He laid it aside. And he came down to you. And so the problem is not the position. I've, I, I've, I know people who are all the way up there. But they make you feel like they are even worse than you. And then I know people that are down there. You're going to have to use the flashlight to see them. But they act like they are up there. Because of the spirit of what? Pride that possesses thee. So I sent a message to him. I didn't even waste my time to write a note. Some people you just got to. I, I told the lady that worked for him. I said, when you go tell him that I said. That while his position don't permit him to associate with certain people. But there is something called death. That's the greatest equalizer. That in debt, we are all the same. Debt make all of us equal. Debt make all of us equal. But woe to those. Whom debt finds unprepared. In debt we are all the same. In debt there is no color. In debt there is no race. In debt there is no creed. In debt there is no. So we are all the same. We all will leave the way. With nothing we came. With nothing. I said, just do me a favor and tell him that I say that there is something called death that's the greatest equalizer. And when we meet death, we are all the same. But I could see that his pride was robbing him of one of the most important things, which is the salvation of the soul. Because the Bible says God gives grace to the humble. But the proud he knows from afar. And grace means God unmerited favor. That which you and I cannot earn for ourselves. Humility will cause God to pour it on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Humble yourself under the mighty hand. 
You see, when we walk in humility, God will show us path that will lead us to victory. There is none in the Bible who ever humbled himself or herself under God's mighty hand that stayed the same. The first step is what? Humility. Jairus needed something. And he was willing to humble himself to find it. He didn't say, well, I'm a ruler of the synagogue. He didn't say, well, you know, I'm a member of the, uh, the, 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 the Pharisee. Well, I am this. Well, so what? You see, you, you, see, you see lives been destroyed, homes been destroyed, families been destroyed, relationships been destroyed, great organizations crumbling down because of this cancer of the soul called pride. Amen. And the only thing that can cure it is humility. And when we begin to humble ourselves, that's when God will start to, uh, to lift us up. Touch somebody said, the man of God is trying his best. Don't go to sleep now. Don't miss it now. Hallelujah! And he, he, he took that first step, right? He, he laid everything aside. He laid the title aside. He laid the position aside. He went looking for Jesus. When he got to Jesus, he went and he fell down. He said, Jesus, there is something that I've been looking for. Friend, there is power. When you can fall on your knees before God, you'll be able to stand on your feet before the enemy. Hallelujah! Some of us, we've been falling before man because we cannot kneel before God. Because pride won't let us go down on our knees. When we begin to go down on our knees, when we begin to acknowledge God for who he is, he'll put you on your feet. He said to Joshua, if you do what I want you to do, no man will be able to stand you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we need humility. You know how many people like Jairus had been losing things left and right? You know how many sons and how many daughters in his community had probably been dying from the same sickness that his daughter had been afflicted with? You know how many Children that the devil claim with our problem. And they could be healed and delivered, but they couldn't because pride. But Jairus said, you know what? I'm going to lay my position aside. I'm going to lay my title aside. I'm going to forget about all this. I'm going to go and fall before Jesus. First step is what? Humility. Between you, brother, between you, sister, and what you want, there's always a gap. There's always a distance. And there are some steps that you need to take in order to close the gap and get to your victory. And I want to I wanna, I wanna talk to you about these steps as we look into the story of Jairus. The first step is what? The first step is what? Humility. I've taken the first step. I'm not there yet, but I'm closer. First step was what? Humility. But the Bible says that Jesus was so impressed with his humility that Jesus said, let's go. And as they were going to his house, a woman came out of nowhere. And interrupt his turn. Have you ever find yourself waiting for something and suddenly it happens and things start happening to try to uh, interrupt your turn? What do you do when it seems like your turn is being interrupted by people that you've never seen in your life? What do you do? You exercise patience. Because you know who's on the case. You exercise our pain. Now imagine, now this woman has come from only God knows where. And she has touched the garment of Jesus. Now Jesus has to stop. Now Jesus and the brother 
has an urgent need. His daughter is dying. You don't, you don't, you don't have time. Time is against the brother. But the moment somebody came and taught Jesus, he he stood patiently waiting. He could say, but Lord, this is my turn. Lord, come on. This is not her turn. This is my turn. Had it been some of us who stop pleading the blood in the name of Jesus, that will you not take. No, so once you know God is on the case, sometimes he will allow things to happen to teach you some things and also to test your trust, your confidence in him. I've come to a place in my life that I've come, you know what, time is in his hand. After I've done my best, i got to trust him with the rest. After I've done my best, i got to trust God with the rest. I've done my best. You know, some people say, well, why are you not doing this? I'm not doing it because I know who's on the case. And I don't want to mess it up. I know that he's not man, that he should lie. No, is he a son of man to promise and not to fulfill. I'm just doing what I got to do. The rest is in his hand. Jairus, when the woman came, touched Jesus. And now the whole procession has a stop. He stood there patiently. You know, some of us, we are humble, but we are not patient. Some of us, we've taken the first step of humility, but we keep failing when it comes to our patience. Because when you are impatient, you become very selfish. You don't think about nobody. You only think about yourself because you think time. You see, when you are impatient, you feel like time is against you. That is why you find so many people running ahead with the, like a chicken without a head. They busy doing nothing. They busy doing nothing because the way they go about moving, like, it looks to you, wait a minute here, brother. You've been so busy, you should have been a little further. Something is wrong because let me tell you something. There is something that grace can do for you that in one minute that you can never do for yourself in a million years. I've been able to accomplish things in one day that others haven't accomplished in years. Because I've come to a place where I've learned. What's that, how did that song go? I've learned to trust and depend on Jesus. I find out if I trust him. But when I fell down before Jesus, I hired him as my lawyer. I hired him as my defender. I got him on the case. Now I got to trust him. If he has to make a couple of stops before he gets to my house, it's all right. If he has to make a couple of stops before he gets to my case, it's all right. Oh, it may look like he's late, but he's always on time. Am I talking to anybody in here? You just got to trust him. Hallelujah, you just got to trust him. He's in control of time. He can say, Lord, you, Lord, you cannot stop. Lord, you cannot afford to stop. My daughter is in a desperate need. You got to keep moving. No, 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 no. Once you know that he's on the case. If he has to make a couple of stops, don't worry. He got it under control. He got it under control. How many of you some? Can testify that you, you remember time that you, you, you thought God was taken by. Shh. He's a non time God. The problem is not with the Lord. The problem is that sometimes we are not what? Patient. And that's how we start messing up things. Some of you mess up and you married Satan's cousin because you just wouldn't wait on God to bring you your husband. 
Some of you brothers, you, 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 you end up marrying Jezebel because you just wouldn't wait for God to bring you your wife. You were too busy and you went and got her for yourself. And what do you end up with? Incarnation of Jezebel. God, why are you doing this to me? Keep me out of it. You thought I was thinking too long. Am I talking to anybody in this house? First step, humility. Second step, patience. You got to be patient. And while he waited patiently for the Lord to finish with this woman. So that they could continue to go to his house. To get his daughter well. Bible says while Jesus was still speaking. Speaking, suddenly somebody came from the house of the ruler of the synagogue with the worst news that anyone in Jairus' position could get. My God. The news was your 12 year old child daughter is no more. Why bother in the master? Wow. Jairus could turn around and say, you see, where is that woman? Had it not been for her, we would make it on time. No, when you trust God, you don't blame nobody. Because you know no leaf fall from the tree without God's permission. If God permits it to happen, I still know who's on the case. I know the God that I am serving. But the roof is leaking. It doesn't matter. But the floor seems to be caving in under your feet. It doesn't matter. I know who's on the case. Job said, I look for him here. I don't see him. I look for him there. I don't see him. I look for him behind me. I don't see him. I look for him in front of me. I don't see him. But I know who's on the case. And when he has finished with me, I will come forth like a gold. I am trusted. Humility, second step, patience. Now we're going into the third step. You gotta be courageous to deal with the bad news of life. Sometimes, as you journey towards your success, you will go through these things. You will go through these things. You, there's a possibility that you may receive a bad news. That comes to suck out of you every bit of hope that you was trying to keep alive within you. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, why have you ever heard the devil if not people saying to you, why are you still praying? Why are you still loving? Why are you still giving? Why are you still going to church? Can't you see that there's no hope for you? Can't you see that you never get it right? Can't you see how messed up you are? Can't you see that God is, is, is not happy with you? you hear, how many of you have heard these voices? Come on, how many of you have heard these voices? What do you do when these voices start coming at you? You got to stay strong. You need to be courageous. Write it down, the third step, courage. You need to be what? Courageous. To remain standing even in the face of adversity. The Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It means that you're not operating in God's strength. You're still operating on your own strength. You got to be courageous. And sometimes this courage cannot be found in mommy. Cannot be found in daddy. Cannot be found in your brothers and sisters. Cannot be found in grandmother. Cannot be found in your government. Sometimes this strength, you got to look deep within yourself to find it. There was a time that David was so discouraged, so down and depressed. And he was looking for people to encourage him. And he, he couldn't find nobody. Then he looked within himself. He said, why are you downcast, oh my soul? Hope in the Lord. Oh, when the world offers you nothing. 
rest your hope on hope in the Lord. Look deep and down within yourself. I said, my hope is in the Lord. Yes, I've heard the bad news. Yes, I've heard the news of death, but I still believe that my God is on the case. Yes, it don't look good to the eyes of the person, but my God is still on the case. Come on, somebody. You gotta be courageous. Brothers, sisters, if the devil is trying to Kill anything, any dream, any vision, anything. If, they, if, if, if everywhere you turn, you keep hearing bad news, be courageous. Be courageous. It is not over until God says, it's over. Hallelujah. It is not over until God says that it's not over. You keep standing. I say keep, the Bible says once when you do everything to stand, what do you do? You stand. Touch somebody says stand. Yeah. Stand. Come on. Don't shift. Don't shift an inch from your stand of faith. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. I say keep on standing. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. The Bible says that he is faithful to finish what he started in you. Yes, you may, you may find yourself weathering some storms. Yes, you may find yourself <laughs> fighting some devils. Yes, you may find yourself fighting some haters. Yes, you may find yourself fighting some spirits of envy and jealousy. That, 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 that's coming at you from every angle. To try to, to, to shut you down. To try to crush your spirit. But the word of God says that when Jesus heard what was told to Jairus. He looked at him and he said, brother, whatever you do, don't be afraid. You keep on believing. Don't be afraid. You keep on believing. The, 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 the belief that starts you on this way, you must keep it so that it can keep you. Brother, don't be afraid. Just believe. Jesus said, brother, don't be afraid. Just believe. You heard what they said, but you came to me because you believe." That I can make it right. I'm on the case. Don't be afraid. He said, Jairus, don't be afraid. Only believe. The devil was speaking on one side. But Jesus was speaking on the other side. You got to decide now. Whose report you going to believe? Whose report you going to have to believe? Whose report? You coin too. But he Jesus look at him. I can imagine Jesus in the crowd of people still talking. You see, Jesus, Jesus knows everything. He's aware of everything. The Bible says Jesus was still speaking. He was still speaking. Are you with me? Jesus was like still speaking. And it looked like the devil took advantage that Jesus was still like speaking to the crowd to speak to Jairus. But I can, I, you know, let's try to picture this here. It looked like Jesus was speaking when he heard the devil through that messenger. Because there are a lot of people in your life that pretend that they really care about you. But they're just agents of Satan. They're just agents of Satan. They're just there to crush your dream. They're just there to crush your vision. They're just there to, to, to they don't care a dime about you. They are agents of Satan that were planted there. Just to frustrate you in your journey of faith. I can imagine Jesus was still speaking and then the devil spoke and, and Jesus just turned around and said, Jairus. Jairus. Don't be afraid, brother. Just believe. I prophetically declare that henceforth, whenever the devil speaks on one side, you're going to hear Jesus speaking on the other side. You're going to hear Jesus speaking on the other side. Uh, the devil was speaking words of doubts and fear. And, but Jesus spoke life. Jesus said, brother, 
don't be afraid. Listen, if you don't remember anything I've said or that I will say to you in this service, just remember the words of Jesus. Don't be afraid. When you're in the storm, don't be afraid. When you're in the fire, don't be afraid. When you're in the courtroom, don't be afraid. When you're standing in front of your doctor, don't be afraid. When you're looking at that judge, don't be afraid. Oh, when things get rough in your workplace, don't be afraid only believe because if you believe you will see the glory of the Lord can I get an amen don't be afraid only believe the first step humility second step patience third step courage Bible says you got to be strong and courageous he said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Because if you are strong and courageous to do what I'm telling you to do, he said, no man will be able to extend you or against you all the days of your life. Come on, somebody. I was telling the people today in Queens, listen, I've been serving God from when I was 17 years old. Some of you, you just look and just see us looking cute with the mic, you know. You judge us by just what you see. And some judge us by, you know, all kind of stuff. But they don't know the battle that we have to fight. Some people don't know the devils that we have. Listen to me. If you think you have demons fighting you, remember, we are fighting our demons and your demons. Listen, if you think the devil is trying to strike you, if you think the devil is trying to strike the sheep, guess what? He's trying to do to the shepherd. Why well, I'm saying this to you? Because some people think we don't have no problem. And during this, this many years that I've been serving God, I've had so many opportunities to quit. I'm human just like you. I have troubles just like you. Every level breeds a new devil. I say every level breeds a new devil. If you don't want to fight no devil, then stay at the level that you are. Stay there and be quiet. If you want to take it to another level, you got to be ready to face a new devil. And when these devils start coming at you from every angle, sometimes they come from places that you less expect them to come. And you got to be strong and courageous to stand and say, Oh God, I know that, I know that, I know that you are on this case. Many times I've heard the devil say, Quit! Quit, walk away. You don't deserve this. Especially when it's coming from people that you've done nothing but pouring into them. You get people from 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 the from my God and then, and, and then you, you 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 fix them up. You 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 pour into them. You you sacrifice while they're sleeping. You are crying for their souls while they're out there going crazy. You in your prayer closet on your belly praying and praying and praying. And then they turn around. They backstab you. It hurts, but as much as it hurts, you gotta hold on to your vision. You gotta say, "Comes with me." Happens one day, I will stand. It is not over till God says that is over. <laughs> Bible says that the bad news came from the house of John. It could very well be one of his servants. It could very well be one of his servants that he had. Help time and time again. There's some news, brother, that you don't deliver. There's some news, sister, that you don't deliver. There's some things that you can never pay me to say. Sometimes you gotta just keep your mouth closed. 
There's some news that you don't deliver. There's some news the father is fighting for his daughter's life. And you have a nerve to come and tell him the child is dead. There's some news you don't deliver. But there are some haters in your life. I said, there's some haters in your life. There's some haters in your life. There are some people in your life. They, 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 they want to get the worst news to deliver to you. They want to get the worst news. And then they come to you pretending that they care. They don't care. They don't care. If you care, you don't deliver that kind of news. You know what that kind of news can do to a brother. But it's even, you know, it's, I'm telling you. I'm te listen, I'm telling you. So I've had, let me get back in the spirit. I've had many opportunities to quit. To walk away because it would be, it would be better. It would be less trouble. It would be less pain. But when I remember that I didn't assign myself. I didn't call myself. I was called. I got to look down within myself and find that courage. Got to look within you and find that courage. I got to make sure I stay tuned to God's frequency. Because when the devil says it's over, I'll be able to hear God saying, not yet. Not yet, 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 not yet. <laughs> not too long ago, one of the ministers that I got from the, I'm not telling you from near there. <laughs> After laboring, put him on his feet. He was nothing. All of a sudden, that spirit of pride creeped in. And he decided that now he, uh, he got to run the show for himself. Walked away and, and talking all kinds of garbage. Everything that I'm doing, all of a sudden, everything that I'm doing is all wrong. The only right thing I did was ordaining him as a pastor. That's the only right thing I did, because that he didn't get rid of. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Some people, the only good thing you ever do for them is what? What benefits them. <laughs> I sent them a message. I said, I'm proud that everything I did for you is wrong. But at the least I did one good thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'll keep praying for you. I don't know how this got in here, but sometimes you just got to talk. Are you with me? But it's in moments like this that you got to be what? Strong and courageous. It's in moments like this you got to be what? Courageous. The same brother that Jairus had poured into came bringing the bed, what? bed news. Your daughter is dead. And what they tell him? Why trouble in the master? You know what he was saying to him? Quit. Yeah. Go bury your dead. And count your loss. But thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Thank God for the voice of faith. Come on. I said thank God for the voice of. I said thank God for the voice of. I said thank God for the voice of. Thank God for the voice of. He'll never stop speaking. He says, do not be afraid, only believe. I'm going to wrap it up now. But as the fight intensified, Jesus realized that it was now time to draw a line. From that moment on, when Jesus heard what came from the house of Jairus, the Bible said from that moment on, he permitted no one to follow him. Except who? Who? 
Yes. Three of them. You see, after that moment, there was a huge crowd. But Jesus said, wait a minute here. It's time to draw out the line. Not everybody in your circle. Not everybody in your circle. Not everybody that started with you will finish with you. I said, not everybody that started with you will finish with you. And you got to know what time is what time. Sometimes you just got to cut some people out. Sometimes you got to cut some people loose. Jesus, from that moment on, he said, no, 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 no. Now only a few of you are going to be permitted to walk with me. You know, sometimes as you move on in life, you got to, you got to secure your surroundings. Because some people, they are not there to do this for you. Some people, they did to do this. Some people are not there to push you forward. They are there to hold you back. And you got to love your destiny more than you love the crowd that's around you. Just to distract you. Are you, are you understanding? Yeah. And so he, he permitted no one but those few to go with him. And when they got to the house, by the time they got to the house, guess who were there already? The mourners. Mourners were already there. Mourners were already there. You see, back then they had professional mourners. <laughs> yes, back then whenever... You had debt. They were mourners. You hired them. You paid them to mourn. Professional mourners. They, they will come for a fee and they'll mourn for you. They got to the house before Jesus. By the time Jesus got there, they were... <laughs> you know what that is? That's the enemy reminding you of your loss. That's the what the enemy reminding you of what you know. You know, sometimes you're trying to forget something so that you can focus on other things, but then you have the devil mourning on the other side, reminding you of what your losses, so that you can lose focus of what matters the most. You see, some some people they cannot focus on what matters the most because they have too many mourners. Reminding them of their heart. What do you do with, the, with them professional mourners? What do you do with them agent of Satan that tends to creep up in your life just to cause you to lose focus from what matters the most? What do you do with them? You do what Jesus did. When Jesus got in, they said, hey, what's all this commotion for? You all acting like the child is dead. The child is not dead, she's just sleeping. You see, that's you got you gotta call the things that are not as though they are. Come on, friends, you gotta call the thing. Jesus, Jesus knew very well that the child was dead. But if you want life, you gotta stop speaking about dead for Christ's sake. If you want something better, you gotta stop speaking about bitterness. You can never get it better while you be bitter you gotta speak life if you want life and jesus said the child is not dead she's just sleeping but you know what they did the professional mourners begun to make fun of jesus you see how can you go you see how can you go from mourning to laughing so quick because they were planted there there are people in your life there are Agents of Satan. They are there just to remind you of 
of your loss and cause you to lose focus of your vision of what matters the most. But what do you do with these people? What, what, what do you do with this? When you identify them, you do to them what Jesus did them. Bible says when Jesus said that the child was sleeping and not dead and they began to laugh, Jesus said, yeah, I know you kind of people. Bible says Jesus put all of them out. I'm sorry to tell you, brother, but there's some things that you need to put out of your life if you have any hope of experiencing a miracle. There are some people that you got to put out. There are some mess that you got to put out. There are some devil that you got to kick out of your life if you have any hope of experiencing a miracle. Jesus put them out. Jesus says, I guess y'all don't know who I am. I just stop the crowd. And I have no problem with putting you mourners out of this house. Because, because if I let you stay in here, you're going to stop heaven's floor. You, gotta, you, you see, there are certain things you got to put out. God is showing me that some of you, there's some things that you, you got to go home and put out. Yeah. If you're serious about your miracle, you got to put it out. Touch somebody, say you got to put it out. You got you to shut it out of your life. Your destiny got to mean more to you than these things and these people. That have been nothing but crab in your life. Holding your leg down. Stopping you from coming out of the cage that they are in. Stand, I'm going to finish. Jesus put them out. Jesus put them out. And when he put them out, the Bible says that he only permitted the father, the mother, and some of his disciples to go into that room where miracle was going to take place. Some of you, you're dragging too many things and too many wrong people. You know what I'm talking about. And you're wondering why it's not happening. Take that scissor and start cutting. And you'll see whether or not it's going to lie to him. And the Bible says when Jesus walked into the room, he said, he didn't even pray, oh God, and then bring her back. He said, little girl, get up. There's something sleeping in your life. I want you to call that thing and say, get up in the name of Jesus. He said, get up. And the Bible says she got up. And Jesus said, feed the girl. And let her grow to fulfill her life purpose. I feel Jesus moving among us through the person of the Holy Spirit.